What's going on, guys? So we got a good close quarter battle video for you today. I want you to be aware before you start watching and typing angrily in the comments. The video on this is a little a little funky. Okay, it's a little funky. All right, like I know we're getting back into the filming. Uh, the cameraman today didn't see the sun glare, so you're gonna see glare in this video. All right, the audio is okay. It's not great, but it's a video, and I I want you to watch it. And I want you to pay attention to it because it's got some good information in it. I'm just getting back on to filming. So like I'm getting back into it. Give me a, give me a weekend or two to like get back in the swing of things and the quality will start getting better and better. But the information at least is there. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the video. Cheers guys. What's going on guys? I'm freaking back. Okay. I'm healed up. I'm ready to go again. Well, let's get to it. So today we're going to be talking about close quarters pistol shooting. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's not all the hand-to-hand -hand fancy stuff, but this is stuff, especially if you live stateside, it's going to save your life if you do carry at all ever. Um, you want to know this type of stuff. So a lot of guys like to carry appendix, right? It's, it's very concealable and it's comfortable enough. Unless you're sitting all day, then you might want to carry on like a four o'clock. But we're going to be talking specifically about appendix right now because that's how all the cool guys are doing it. So we're going to be talking about, I'm carrying appendix and I'm in a close range fight. Like Kyle comes up and like, he's, he's swinging on me and I'm like, oh shit, I got it. I got to defend myself and I got to defend myself with a firearm. And maybe he pulls out, all right, Kyle, let's, he's got a knife now. He's like brandishing his knife, whatever. Right. So I can't necessarily like, I could draw, step back, present all of that stuff that you see in like your basic CCW class. But let's say he's he's coming in on me and moving in, right? And, oh, shit, he's even pinning my firearm. I'm in a dire straits right now, especially if he's got a fucking knife pointed at me. So I need to act, and I need to act quick. What I want to do is I want to be able to clear my holster enough, and I'm just going to pull it straight up. And if he's really pressing down on me here hard, it's going to be difficult. So maybe I need to use two hands, and I come and I pull straight up, and I get that leverage I need, and I just get it cleared from my holster. Again, Keep your finger off that trigger. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. So I get it up and out. And then at this point, all I'm going to do is point the weapon straight at him. This is why, guys, we don't do it Israeli style. We don't carry with a weapon with our weapon in condition three. That's no round in the chamber. If Kyle comes in here, he pulls me, and I don't have a round in the chamber, how fucked am I right now? What am I going to do? And like then, like no, okay, I'm dead. I'm just dead. So that's why we always carry a uh, round in our chamber. Go ahead, pin me up. I'm able to get it clear here. Now immediately, I'm going to start licking shots at him. Where am I going to be aiming my shots? I'm going to be aiming him at his pelvic girdle. If I get with 9mm, 38, whatever caliber of weapon I'm using, if I'm getting him in the pelvic girdle here, boom, it's going to knock him, hopefully knock him to the ground. And again, it's easier to aim here, here, than it is to like start trying to aim at any like all this stuff because... I have an active threat, and especially if he starts stabbing me, right, and I'm having to fend off here, shooting in the pelvic girdle is really what I want to do. Not to mention the fact that if I need to use my hands and get them involved here, I don't want to risk shooting my own hand. All right, it's like, oh, you know, we were talking earlier, earlier and we were saying, yeah, you know, it's cooler, like, it's better to get, you know, your hand shot than, than get killed, right? Yeah, absolutely, but you say that until you don't have your left hand, right? So... We want to go ahead and aim low so that even if we're having to fend something off up here, we can shoot low. And we're not going to shoot our own hand. So we're aiming down into the pelvic girdle. What might need to happen is you might need to zipper him up a little bit, they call it. So I'm aiming my first shot down here. Bang, 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 bang. And every time I squeeze that trigger, the barrel is one inch higher. Bang, 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 bang. And eventually, it should drop him, right? So pelvic girdle. To the, to the hip here, to the whatever, organs up here in the stomach, and then eventually we zipper them up. If we have a 10-round magazine, even with like a 43X or something like that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one of those, at some point he's going to drop, all right? And, unless we're just such a terrible shot that like we kill all the civilians around us. So one more time, what this is going to look like is, oh, shit, he pulls out a knife. I clear my weapon. He sees I'm clearing my weapon. I get it up and out. Immediately, bang, bang, bang. Now, I need to be prepared for two things. Number one, that he's actually uh, trying to engage and stab me, right? So, uh, 
and I'm still, I'm shooting and I'm just being cognizant of my arm as much as possible, but I'm also trying to take care of the threat. Whether that's here pinning it to our chest or whether that's coming back here, we get, we deal with the threat. Now, number two, I need to be cognizant of, he might start falling into me. Go ahead. And now he's falling into me. So I'm shooting him in the hip, but literally get fall into me. Now I need to be able to recognize that this knife is still a threat. If he falls into me and falls into me like this, well, get out your tourniquets, boys. Okay, we're going to need it. So what I want to be cognizant of is bang, 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 bang. He's falling into me. I press out here and make sure that this knife, should it be there, um, is not, is not um, going to stab me when he falls into me. So I need, I need to be cognizant to clear that. And then also cognizant of the fact that there might be obstacles. This might be up between cars, right? This could be my car door coming at me. Right? Oh, shit, he slams me up against my car door. I don't have anywhere to go back now, right? I have to get this clear. Bang, 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 bang. You fall into me. Bang. And I need to be able to come down here and now with this. And again, weapons retention is going to be important. Don't shoot him in the back of the head. You go to jail for that. Like, <laughs> you never shoot him in the back of the head unless you can't, unless you have no option, right? But um, do be prepared for that, that he'll fall into you as well. And be prepared for the fact that you might be trapped and you might not have a point of egress. You're going to need to know some skills to wrestle with that knife as well, which is where all the other videos that we put out will come into play to go check them out. So that's it, guys, for this video uh, about brief, like, down and dirty synopsis of weapons retention. I know that there's a lot of pretty videos out there about do this and do that, but this is, like, practical experience. This is what, like, what can happen, and this is, like, how to prevent some pretty deadly mistakes. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Gutterfightingsecrets dot com is the website we got direct download programs available that i am absolutely honored to be able to share with you guys and train the next generation of warriors i'll see you next time other flowers